This is the third video in the sequence for Chapter 5, covering polynomial long division. Now, polynomial long division is a new idea, but it is completely based on an idea that we had learned in grade school. When we first learned how to divide, we didn't have calculators available to us, so we would set up and we would carry out long division. Now, when we do long division, we are consistently only working with as many digits as a time at a time as we have to. So, in this case, if we're looking at 4 dividing into 8764, we would really only be looking at how many times does 4 go into 8, which would be twice. Then we do 2 times 4 is 8, and we subtract, which would leave nothing. Then we move over a digit, we bring that next digit down, and we start the entire process over again. We ask ourselves, how many times does 4 go into 7? The answer is once. 1 times 4 is 4, and we would subtract to get 3. Then we would bring the next digit down. Bring that 6 down. How many times does 4 go into 36? 9 times, which actually works out evenly. And then we would bring down that last term. And we would say, how many times does 4 go into 4? One time. So our answer is 2,191. Now, as time went on and we got more advanced in our mathematics, those numbers got bigger. However, that process did not change. We still would go through one digit at a time, and we would ask ourselves, does 216 go into 4? No. Does it go into 45? No. Does it go into 453? Yes, it does. Twice. 2 times 216 is 432. And we would subtract, which would leave 21. Then we would move over and we'd bring that last digit down. And we'd do it again. How many times does 216 go into 216? Once, which is 216. So we did not have anything left over. And our answer was 21. Now eventually we got to the point in grade school where we could handle partial numbers, decimals, fractions. And we started learning about how to deal with long division when it doesn't work out evenly. So here's one that doesn't work out evenly, just so we can remind ourselves of the several different ways that we were shown to do this. First of all, 31 does not go into 5, but it does go into 54 a single time, which would be 31, and would leave 23. Then we'd move over. And we'd bring that next digit down, 236. And we would ask ourselves, how many times does that go in? Well, it goes in seven times, which would be 217. We would subtract. There's 19 left over. Now, there's a lot of different ways that we learn to deal with this. We start off learning about how to write R19. That's the first way we would have done it. But eventually, we got to the point where, OK, well, now we have decimals. Well, then we can add a zero and we can keep going and just keep adding digits till we get an answer. But that's not the way that long division is going to work, so we're not going to do it that way either. What long division is going to do is it is going to turn this remainder into a fraction and essentially write our answer as a mixed number in a way. So that would be 17 and 19 over our divisor, 31. All right, so... Polynomial long division. Here we go. We're going to do one example on this video, maybe two, depending on how much time I have to get the video done. Uh, then there will be an additional video that shows additional examples. So first of all, for polynomial long division to work, both the polynomial and the divisor, that's the trinomial here and the binomial, must be in descending order by variable. In other words, x to the fifth, x to the fourth, x to the third, x to the second, x to the first, and x and zero, a number. Okay, they all have to be in order from largest exponent to smallest exponent. In addition, all of those terms must be there. If there's one missing, we have to add a zero. And we will not have an example of that in this video. So you will have to watch the next video to get an example of that. So what we do is we write our division bar. Notice I've added a little step here on the front. Our divisor, x minus 5, goes on the outside. And our dividend, our polynomial, goes on the inside. 
Now, much like we did for long division, we are only going to focus on the first term of both our divisor and our dividend. And we are going to ask ourselves, what do I need to multiply x by to turn it into x squared? The answer is x. So just like I did for long division, I'm going to write that answer up here. That's going to be the first term of my answer. Now, at this point, we're going to take that x and we're going to multiply our entire dividend by x and write it underneath the first two terms. So x times x is x squared. x times negative 5 is negative 5x. Now think about back to that long division algorithm. We would then subtract. Now I don't like to say subtract because I feel like there's sign errors that could be made here. So the way that I phrase that in this process is I say draw the line, change both signs, add down. Now when you add down, this first column should always cancel. And that will leave 8x for the next step of the process. 3x plus 5x is 8x. Then we would grab that next term, bring it down, and we would start the entire process over again. So we're only going to look at the first term of the divisor and the dividend. We're going to say, what do I need to multiply x by to turn it into 8x? The answer is, we need to multiply it by 8. Then, we would move to multiply, and we would say 8 times x, 8 times x, is 8x, 8 times negative 5 is negative 40. Draw a line, change both signs, add down. Now in this case, we do not have a remainder. The remainder is 0. This last number with no terms left to bring down is your remainder. So our answer is simply x plus 8. Let's do another one because we should have time. Here we have a trinomial divided by a binomial. Actually, there's two examples on this page, so we might be able to get them both in depending on how fast I go. x minus 3 goes on the outside. x squared plus 7x minus 30 on the inside. Now again, we are only going to look at the first term of each thing. And we're going to ask ourselves, what do I need to multiply x by to get x squared? That would be x. Then we move our thought process to talking about two terms. We say, okay, x times x is x squared. x times negative 3 is negative 3x. Draw the line, change both signs, add down. Would be 10x. Then we're going to grab that next term. We're going to bring that negative 30 down. And we're going to start the entire process over again. So we're only going to look at x and 10x. And we're going to ask ourselves, what do I need to multiply x by to get 10x? The answer would be 10. Then we're going to multiply 10. Come on, computer. 10 times x is 10x. 10 times negative 3 is negative 30. Draw the line, change both signs, add down. Now again, this last number here is our remainder. So once again, this problem is so simple that there is no remainder, and our answer is simply x plus 10. Let's get one more in whether I have time or not. I believe this is the first example that will have a remainder and therefore would be a good place to stop this video. So here we go. Again, we're only going to look at the first term and the first term. I'm not even going to bring the boxes in this time. What do I need to multiply x by to get x squared? That's x. Now I know that all three examples have started with an x. It doesn't always start with an x. You have to ask yourself, what do I need to do to this term to turn it into this term? So x times x is x squared. x times negative 1 is negative 1x. Draw the line, change both signs, add down would be negative 12x. What do I need to do 
to x to turn it into negative 12x, I need to multiply by negative 12. Negative 12 times x is negative 12x. Negative 12 times negative 1 is positive 12. Draw the line, change both signs, which makes this 12 negative, add down. I was wrong. This one doesn't have a remainder either. So our answer would be x minus 12. All right, we can get one more in. Let's do one more. Okay, so here we have another example of that notation. Okay, again, this negative exponent simply means we're going to be dividing by 3 minus x. That's what that notation says. Okay, so what happens is this turns into this problem. So we're going to be dividing x squared plus 7x minus 11, which is in descending order, by 3 minus x, which is not in descending order. So we have to write it in descending order as negative x plus 3. That negative sign is attached to the x. So when I put it in descending order of variable, that x term has to come first, which means negative x would be my first term in the binomial. So then we start our process. What do I need to multiply negative x by to get positive x squared? Well, that would be negative x. See how it doesn't always start with x? Then we take that and we multiply our binomial. So negative x times negative x is x squared. Negative x times 3 is negative 3x. Draw the line, change both signs, add down is 10x. Now notice that negative x is our first term in our answer, which means a is not the correct answer. Bring the next term down and start over. What do I need to multiply negative x by to get positive 10x? That would be negative 10. Negative 10 times negative x is 10x. Negative 10 times positive 3 is negative 30. Draw the line, change both signs, add down. Now notice we have a remainder. So we have to deal with that remainder. Now also notice that we have minus 10 for our next term, which means b is not the correct answer. Now, as for the remainder, we treat that just like we would a mixed number. This is a positive 19, so we write plus 19 over, and then we write our divisor underneath as the denominator. So we're dividing by 3 minus x, so that becomes the denominator on our remainder. Notice that is plus 19 over 3 minus x, which means d is not the correct answer. The correct answer is c. The remainder of the example problems from this set of notes will be in another video. Please, please, please watch it. There are still some significant things to talk about.